Good morning. Let's talk about fresh food. <laughs> the nine of us are here from the University of North Georgia in Dahlonega, representing the community-based research of four classes and 24 students. Our majors range from art to business to history. Several of us are minors in Appalachian studies. Our center is located in a historic building that has served as a meeting place, bridging the town and gown gap for almost 40 years. For the past two years, our ATP research has centered around collecting, banking, growing, and sharing Southern Appalachia's heirloom seeds and ethnocultural knowledge of the seed keepers. We continued this work, but realized our next project needed to be more integrated into the larger issues surrounding food in Appalachia. The name of our project is Local Food for Local People, promoting food democracy in Lumpkin County, Georgia. Today we'll explore the political and economic boundaries and barriers that local people have to fresh food and how we used art form to encourage awareness about these issues. To conduct this qualitative research, we partner with our local farmer's market. As we studied the terms food democracy, food insecurity, and food access, we discovered the Locavore Index, a state-by-state -state ranking of commitment to local foods. It lists the number of farmer's markets, consumer-supported agriculture operations, or CSAs, food hubs, and farm-to-school programs in the state. Overall, Georgia ranks 40th on the Locavore Index. And applying these same criteria to Lumpkin County, you can see that our local food system appears to have much room for improvement. Local food is important. The culture and tradition behind the term homegrown is extensive, and the art has now become increasingly rare. There's nothing like a ripe tomato picked early that morning out of the sun. And at the farmer's market, we know where our produce comes from and who harvested it. Not to mention, y'all, it's homegrown. It is this genuine care and concern that grows our food, greets us at the market on Saturday mornings with a smile, and asks the standard question, how's your mama in them? Therefore, we wanted to know, how can students help the Dahlonega Farmer's Market create a better local food system? To answer this question, we set out on a course of research. First, we hosted two question and answer sessions with the program manager of the Dahlonega Farmer's Market. Next, we conducted a survey to evaluate student participation in the Farmer's Market. And finally, we held three seed shares at the Farmer's Market. For the question and answer session, students submitted questions to the Downtown Development Authority Project Coordinator. These questions included, does the farmer's market allow art and craft vendors or include music or other festival-like activities? Does it take supplement, nutrition, assistant, program benefits? These are otherwise known as SNAPs. What variety do vendors offer? How expensive is it compared with the grocery store? We learned that the main purpose for the DDA sponsorship of the farmer's market is to offer local food to local people and increase local and downtown commerce in the process. The overseeing of the farmer's market is assigned to only one DDA official and is one of the many responsibilities demanded by her job. We asked 262 students and staff if they had visited the farmer's market at least once, and if not, what was the reason? Only a quarter of those surveyed had visited at, one, at least once. Typical reasons for not visiting included awareness. I didn't know there was one. Time and location. I didn't know where or what time it was. Schedule conflicts. I have to work or I go home on the weekends. Price. It's too expensive. Variety or seasonality. It doesn't have enough different kinds of fruits and veggies or I can't get what I want when I need it. Convenience. I never carry cash and I don't know how to cook. Campus living. <laughs> I live in a dorm. I have a meal plan. And some of our odd responses. It's not something that interests me. I never even have a ride. The farmer's market is only four blocks from campus. <laughs> I'm not a farmer, so I don't need a market. <laughs> and our personal favorite, I don't need fruits and vegetables. 
Our purpose for hosting the seed swaps was to conduct participant observation research. We wanted to talk with vendors and visitors, observe customers and vendor interaction, and note dem demographics, all the while studying the culture of the farmer's market. What we discovered was the market is popular. Most vendors sell out completely each Saturday. The market's a happy place. Vendors make a point of chatting with visitors, offering advice ranging from how to cook the produce to how to change the world. It's relatively small and only takes up one and a half sides of a city block. Vendors and shoppers vary. Some of the vendors are hobby gardeners recently moved to the area. Some are from families who have been there for many generations. At least one has a full-time farm. We were excited to see the grandchildren of one of our seed keepers selling their own produce. However, not many college students shop at the farmer's market. So we asked ourselves, how can we raise student awareness? Blast the campus with really cool promotional posters. That's how. These appeal to multiple demographics through color, pop culture, and a nostalgic medium. First, we reviewed materials and data gathered by student researchers in the intro class. Second, we sourced images from photographic documentation of the farmer's market and seed swaps. Third, we generated a design for printed broadsides in consultation with student researchers in the field. Then, we began to print. Letterpress printing is a type of relief printing using an antique printing press. A worker composes and locks movable type into the press, a bed of a press, inks it, and presses paper against it in order to transfer the ink and create an impression. Letterpress printing was the normal form of printing beginning in the mid-15th until the second half of the 20th century. The product is referred to as a broadside, a broadside being a large sheet of paper printed on one side. They were the most common form of printed material between the 16th and the 19th centuries used for advertisements, news, political or religious proclamations, and musical ballads. Today, they're considered an art form. So how did we actually create these broadsides? For each color on the broadside, the image must be separated into different layers of color that will then be printed. Images must be converted into a printable template created using hand-carved linoleum blocks and light-sensitive pho photopolymer plates that are exposed and washed to create a raised surface suitable for printing. Words are printed using movable type. Type of Type can be made of wood or metal and can come in an array of fonts. Composed images and text are locked into the press bed for printing. We use a cylinder show card press, which is shown here. <laughs> Inspired by advertisements for World War II Victory Gardens, hat show print, the broadsides were crafted to be pleasing to the viewer and to preserve the power of the message through simple design. For example, a print by one of the groups was made to design and celebrate the effort and work of the farmers selling at the market. By including a shovel in the composition, the hard work of gardening is represented while the seedling plant represents growth. Another group sourced a seed keeper's catalog to find the quote, cultivate tradition, that they felt encompassed the drive to grow both a garden and oneself. Many of the farmers market sellers and patrons provided quotable material. Local food for local people is one example. The print colors in this broadside were inspired by the various jams and fruit jellies sold at the market. Using bright colors, simple design, humor, and references to pop culture, the prints insist that farmer's markets are for our generations, too. <laughs> the broadsides reinforce the idea that growth is both individual and collective, as is gardening and celebrating local food. Everything about the creation of the broadsides celebrates community as they were conceived, composed, and created by students and research teams. The circle will be made complete when they are shared with the community in an art exhibition and as the 2015 Dahlonega Farmers Markets promotional campaign. We realized our best contribution to a better local food system is to, number one, continue participating in the farmers market. Visitors come to socialize and connect to their community as much as they do to buy produce. The art installations, stories, and free heirloom seeds are a point of pride to the local seed keepers, several of, several of whom participate as vendors or are related to them. Out-of-town visitors enjoy learning about this unique cultural treasure. Number two, we should raise awareness on campus about the market. 
Educating students on the value of the farmer's market and on local and seasonal foods, would do this by, we could do this by offering cooking classes, food samples, or easy recipes. Number three, we should blast the campus with broadsides. And number four, throughout our research, the project grows as people grow enthusiasm. We strongly believe that greater student and community awareness will attract future volunteers, allowing us to better serve the community because, hey, it already has. However, the stated problem, how can we help to create a better local food system, obscured the real problem. Residents who lack access to fresh food exist in Lumpkin County. This was an unexpected discovery. But according to the USDA, Lumpkin County does not have a food desert. By the USDA's definition, a food desert for rural areas is a low-income census tract that has a significant number of residents who are more than 10 miles from a grocery store. For urban areas, it is more than one mile. Yet, notice where the only two grocery stores are located within the county. And notice the low-income census tracts. Although the USDA's Food Access Atlas suggests that Lumpkin County does not have a food desert, the data does show a presence of low income and low accessibility to vehicles. The report indicates that there are 194 households that have no access to a vehicle and are more than half a mile from the grocery store, 81 of which are located in a low income census tract. Notice the terrain where the sidewalk ends. The majority of roads in Lumpkin County resemble the one above. We're a mountainous community. Watch for falling rocks, curves ahead. Would you walk here? The road previously shown leads to this view. From where the picture is taken, the arrow indicates where Dahlonega is situated. Also from where this picture is taken, along with many other areas in Lumpkin County, there are no supermarkets within a 10 mile radius. Guys, this includes the surrounding counties. Other pov poverty indicators include 66% of Lumpkin students qualify for free or reduced lunch. Homeless population is not eligible for the food bank. And the residents of domestic violence shelter lack adequate fresh food. Because of these findings, we plan to continue our research and the movement to help our community as we discover the many needs concerning access to fresh food. By extending our partnership with the farmer's market and working with the DDA, we can propose ways to strengthen infrastructure and support growth while expanding food availability through community programs. Thank you to these classes, these students, these professors, these community volunteers, this partner, and most of all, thank you to East Tennessee State University and the Appalachian Regional Commission for making the ATP possible. <laughs>